Hello again, Fleet Commanders. Welcome back to the channel. I am your host, Tiberius. Wanted to do a quick video for you today going over the ISS Jellyfish. Uh, I thought it was kind of fitting because we're doing a, an event right now. We're in the middle of a jellyfish brawl. So I kind of wanted to go over the ship a little bit, talk about the two events, uh, the one to acquire the blueprints for it, the different ways you can go about doing that, and the ways to level it up and just sort of uh, what the benefits and value of the ship are. So we'll start right here. We look at our ISS Jellyfish. Very cool looking ship available at Ops 39 to build. Requires Shipyard 39 to build it. Uh, its ship ability, depending on the level, it gains a certain percentage uh, to damage at the start of every round of combat. That stacks with no limit. So round two, add on, add round three, add on, etc. Uh, definitely has a big advantage in longer fights, such as armadas, which will really take advantage of that, or fighting uh, like the level 49 traders that are in the capital systems. Those fights tend to go a long number of rounds, so those are the fights that are really going to maximize the ship bonus there. Uh, using five as captain with Khan, uh, again, mid maximizing the mitigation so the fight can go longer so the ship will survive longer the ship will take more hits start stacking with Khan doing more criticals now you're getting little bits of damage bonuses increasing steadily as the ship progresses and then Khan making more of those hits into critical attacks um, also works well with Riker as captain because Riker's ability against armadas scales damage each round uh, so if you can put Riker as captain and then add some mitigation somewhere, um, or like Riker, Kirk, Spock, or something like that to regenerate shields to keep the ship longer, or you know just Riker, Beverly, and somebody else uh, to really increase your your mitigation, your chances of of surviving fights, of, of taking less damage each round, uh, can really let both his ability and the ship's ability really start to scale up over a long number of rounds. So that's something to keep in mind. As far as upgrading the ship, most players tend to stop right around tier five. Um, if your server happens to be level capped at 39 and there are no 40 plus ships available to you yet, you might take it a little further because you know you want to continue to grow and continue to be able to hit higher level targets and you won't have access to uh, the higher level ships yet. As you get closer to that point where um, that's going to become available on your server and we will start to get those ascension keys and things to move up to 40 and then to you know the 40 plus the g4 ships um, you definitely want to start saving resources for that um, just kind of got to keep an eye on your server how new it is uh, it's usually somewhere in that 8 to 12 month window so if you know if you're one of the a server that just started in january and you're you know, already hitting 39 and you're looking at this ship uh, this ship is probably going to be the, the best one you're going to get until you know the end of the year so um, you can go ahead and continue to invest some resources in it for a little bit uh, maybe push it to tier six or tier seven uh, depending on what your spending habits are um, and then start to taper off and save up toward the you know third quarter fourth you know september october end of the year there my particular jellyfish right now is at tier five i went to tier five just so i could get the extra five from the warp six the warp engine there to get the extra uh, warp range gives it a base rate of 85 which lets me reach a couple systems in in deep space having uh, the research that I get at level 42 for doing the warp particle research gives me an extra 10 so that gets me to 95 95 gives me a little bit of warp range to get beyond this hub of systems and get out to these uh, as we see out here, this one is a 95. There are higher level armada targets here. Uh, this system as well is warp 100. Uh, at ops 44, you do get an additional warp particle research. Uh, it gives you an extra five warp speed, which I just got to 44. So that will get me uh, be able to reach here. And these are additional armada targets in these systems as well. So giving you more options than just what's available in the lower hub in each system. Uh, being able to go a little bit further out, find some of those uh, slightly bigger armada targets. It's kind of why I pushed the jelly to where I did there. Um, at that point in time, usually most players kind of 
taper off, you start saving your resources uh, for your level 42 ships, your, your G4 uncommon faction ships, your Kelvin, uh, Valdor, or uh, Katinga. Couldn't think of the name of the ship for a minute. How do you get the jellyfish? There are several ways to get it. We'll pull up the first one here real quick. Looking at our events, there is an event called ISS Jellyfish Pursuit. It is a leaderboard event. It starts at Ops 36 is when you can enter it. You pull up there, you see right in the description, you must be level 39 plus to build the ship. It is a spend event, G3, G4, materials, and armada directives, typical to a lot of the standard events uh, that we usually get in a monthly arc, where you have to spend a ridiculous amount of resources to do it. Uh, the amount of blueprints and things you get do vary per server, based on the age of your server. Um, newer servers tend to only pay out, and you know they'll give all the blueprints to the guy who finishes in first, um, and they don't pay out anybody else. It's kind of an all or nothing kind of thing. As the server age progresses, they start to add in second and third place, you know, rewards. Like second place might get half, and then third place gets like a quarter of the blueprints. Um, so it gives you a little bit of uh, incentive, lets you sort of compete uh, somewhat along the way, but it's definitely going to require you to either spend a significant amount of money uh, to get those resources, or you're going to have to plan ahead and save up for a while in order to do it. Option number two, we'll just go home, it's easier that way. If you have a three-star territory, which has a G4 node in it, your Alliance will have this ISS Jellyfish Constructor. Let you purchase jelly blueprints once per week from the store. You have to be level 39 to see this and make this available, and then your Alliance would have to activate this buff in the store. It's not a very costly one, looking at the resources available. So if you happen to be like the only 39 in your Alliance, and you're like, well, I don't want to waste the resources activating it just for me. Um, there are, it, it's a fairly low cost in order to enable this service. This is available now, thankfully, to some changes on all of the uh, three-star systems. It used to only be on specific ones, so there's six of them in the game. Uh, it used to only be on three of them, three specific ones. If your alliance didn't have it, uh, you were kind of screwed on that. Uh, they did update it, so now all six of them do have it. If your alliance does not, make friends with somebody who does. <laughs> it's really the best thing I can tell you. Um, because you can just you know leave your alliance, hop over to the other alliance once per week. Uh, that's what I had to do in order to get mine. Basically every Tuesday, like right after Latinum Rush ended and server reset, we got our alliance rewards. There usually weren't a lot of events on Tuesday. There's no territory takeover fights on Tuesdays. So I would just hop over my alliance right around noon, um, just afternoon, cash in, uh, Isogen, which we'll look at the chart in a second, to get the uh, jellyfish blueprints, hang out there for the, you know, eight hours you have to wait before you can go back to your original alliance, and then drop and move back Tuesday night. Um, certainly a lot of players do flip-flop back and forth, you know, between allies and things like that, good way to get the blueprints. Looking at the costs for it, there are three different conversion options. If you want one blueprint, it's going to cost you 6,500 isogen. This is refined isogen. This is not raw isogen. Uh, so you can get one blueprint for 6,500, and you can see it takes 120 blueprints to do it. This is what it would cost you in total, and taking one blueprint per week would take you 28 months if this was the only way you were getting blueprints. Uh, this is kind of unrealistic, <laughs> a little unrealistic. Most players fall into option two. This is what I did spend, uh, get five blueprints a week for the cost of 45,000 isogen. Uh, you can kind of, if you have, uh, you know, the ship skin and things like that for the Meridian, and you can do the refines, uh, you can get 45,000 in one, one and a half days of, of doing your refinery. I think I get like 42,000 a day or something like that, so um, that's doing mostly the three-star pulls, so or the three chest pulls, rather. Takes you 24 chests. It's going to cost you just over a million in isogen. 
paying a little bit more, but you see the time drops from 28 months to five and a half months. So uh, this is where most players tend to fall in. Uh, option number three, you can get 15 a week. It's going to cost you 500000 You only have to do that eight times, and you're paying a lot more per blueprint. But if you did this every week, you could finish in a lot quicker time. Um, like I said, I get about 40,000-ish, 42,000 per day. So this is, you know, 12, like a 12-day cycle. So if you do that eight times, that's still about 100 days, which is still about three-ish months. Um, yeah, I mean, if you if you bought like a research or something like that, a research pack for territory that had isogen, you could probably do this a little faster, but you could also buy jellyfish blueprints. Um, they sell them in bundles of 15. So you could also just do that and buy the blueprints for $100 instead of buying a pack to get this to then go do the conversion to convert it, unless there's other stuff in the pack that you wanted. Uh, like I said, most players are going to fall into this tier 2 bucket here. You can realistically refine this, you know, every two days, we'll say, um, and then, you know, cash it in, spend two days getting it back, and then you have a couple extra days uh, where you're just getting isogen to do your research and stuff still, so you don't fall too far behind in... Uh, in your territory research tree because there's a lot of good value in those those territories the third option for getting jellyfish blueprints comes from your epic armada chests once you hit ops 38 this pack changes for the final time you see the cost down here it's about 5,000 uh, epic credits for a two pull but you do start to get ISS Jellyfish Blueprints available in here now. Um, some people have been lucky enough to hit a full pull. The ones I usually hear about getting the full pull are the ones who recently got a Jellyfish. So it's like, oh, I finally grind, I got my Jellyfish, and then I did my thing and I got a full pull, so now I've got two. Um, you can't scrap the Jellyfish currently, so there's no point in building a second one. Um, so you might as well just go ahead and, and skip that altogether. Uh, but this would be the pack. This would be a way to pick up some extra blueprints. This is also a weekly cooldown. The Epic Armada chest. We'll go ahead and do ours now and see what we get. We got two. Um, as well as some G4 resources. Common gas, uncommon ore. Gas and ore are the two main resources you will need to uh, tier this up. So being able to pick up some of those in the pack as well isn't bad. Um, and then every blueprint you get here is a blueprint you don't have to get through the isogen so there are different ways to uh, to go about getting this the g4 epic pack which you get once you start hitting 40 uh, there are no jellyfish blueprints in this this is all g4 plus oh there are jellyfish blueprints in this i lied um i don't know at some point these will drop out i thought it was just the g4 ships but um, if you get to 40 and you still don't have a jellyfish, you can see this pack. It is also available in here, so you might get some blueprints that way. Although, at that point in time, you'd still want to build the jellyfish if you don't have it, so you get access to the jellyfish brawl event. How many times can I say jellyfish in this video? Um, <laughs> every time I say it, drink. Um, the brawl event, which we'll cover in just a second, has a tremendous amount of resources, and you, you would want to do it anyway. Uh, so even if you get to 40 and you have the options for these packs, which are much more expensive, you're going to kind of have to set Deep Space Armadas in order to really get the amount of credits you need uh, to open these on a, on a consistent basis. But if you can, and you can get these extra blueprints, and that speeds you up a little bit faster, if you happen to just sort of move through uh, pretty quickly, 38, 39, 40, or go right to 41, And focus on your 42 ships but kind of you know when I get it I get it kind of thing with this ship um, you know you'd still want to build it eventually and this would be another way to get additional blueprints for it is in the other epic pack the rare pack here does not have anything and the regular rare pack here just has the epic ships so it's only in the epic packs that you can get the blueprints for the ISS jellyfish. 
what's the big benefit of this event? What's the big What's the big benefit of the ship? Is the event, the ISS Jellyfish Brawl, uh, usually comes around about once a month. They've been putting this on. Uh, the event is simple. If you have a jellyfish, this event appears to you. Your goal is to take your ship. You have to use the jellyfish and go kill 50 hostiles in one of these three systems. You can see them marked on the map with the skulls the way that they do for the discovery events. They are out here in higher level space. <clears throat> the systems have not changed in any uh, recent time. Your Federation one has a mixture of miners, explorers, and a few interceptors but mostly miners and explorers. They range from level 38 to 40. The Romulan system has mostly, <coughs> excuse me, uh, explorers and battleships. And the, again, these are faction ships, so they do give reputation. So also keep that in mind when you're choosing your system. And the Klingon system over here has uh, interceptors, which the jellyfish does have a natural advantage against with the combat triangle. Um, so most people, most people do tend to come to the system because it's miners and interceptors. Um, they kind of go after the interceptors to really take advantage, like I said, of that combat triangle. A lot of people also seem to go fed rep first, so getting extra fed rep for your points, for your kills, makes that a little bit more straightforward and beneficial to you as well. Um, you're only required to have the ship built to unlock this event. It can be tier one. Um, having just a tier one ship might make it a little bit more challenging to kill some of these guys. You might have to make two or three trips uh, per, you know, to have enough hull health in order to kill these things. Maybe you level it up to like level two or level three. Um, and just looking at the costs involved here with leveling up the ship. So going to tier two, this is just all common resources. Going to tier three does cost you some of these. Now you're looking at uncommon resources that you're going to need to do that. Um, so this may be kind of the point where if you're already past the ship, you may not want to invest very heavily in it. Maybe just get it up to about here. Um, you know, if you're a 40, 41 and you're just picking up your jellyfish so you can do the brawl event. This is kind of where you want to get it to. Obviously, your research and officers and things will give it enough extra strength that you should be able to finish in one or possibly, you know, you might need a second trip to get the full 50 kills kind of around here. Um, if you are still at 39 and you're going to be there for a little while, um, then you'll want to push it up a little bit more, probably to around tier five or so. You're going to need quite a bit of these uncommon explorer parts. Um, as well as a lot of refined ore and gas. Now, keep in mind these are base costs. Any efficiency researches you have, things in the what's it? The the rogue. Their their territory store um, will lower your ship parts costs, and then you can also have efficiency researches to lower the cost of the gas and the ore as well. To the research tree real quick just to show you where those are. Hopefully you have some of these done already. Outlaw, that's what I couldn't think of. Uh, so obviously you have the efficiencies right here. Your explorer bartering does lower the cost of, of parts. Uh, as you tier this up it changes from tier 3 gas to tier 4 gas. Uh, so it does get it to be a little bit more expensive to do that. But that'll also help with the, the part cost. And then further down here um, you've got, this is just for buildings in your galaxy tab. You have your pure gas here, which lowers the cost for ship components, as well as your pure ore, which will also lower the cost for the ship components uh, right here to help make this a little bit more uh, reasonable to get. We mentioned the Jellyfish Brawl event a couple times. Let's take a look at it finally. So here's the event right here. It is a two-day event, usually. Got to kill 50 things, like I said. The rewards for it pay out. Basically, this is almost effectively doubling 
uh, right around 5,000 uncommon four-star ship parts when you total all of them up together. You also get common ship parts, common gas, uncommon gas, common and uncommon ore. So this is a great way, especially if you're at 39, in order to get the, this is really going to be your only way other than, you know, leveling up and scrapping like a Mayflower. Um, this is really going to be your only way to get the parts needed to upgrade the ship. Uh, also just start, uh, you know, being able to get the resources to save up for uh, higher level stuff as well. Once you're kind of past it, it's still a great event to have because this is still a great way to get resources. Um, a lot of players tend to go for the Valdor as their first level 42 ship. That's the Romulan Explorer. And you can utilize this event to your advantage to get ship parts, to get gas, to get ore, to invest in that ship instead. Um, you know, get your jellyfish up to like tier four or so, kind of stop and then just kind of save this stuff. So that way you hit the ground running when you finally get to Ops 42, you get that ship built. Uh, you can tear it up already a couple of tiers uh, and get it up eight, nine million in strength kind of right out the, you know, that first week uh, because of the event uh, resources you've accumulated from the ISS Jellyfish Brawl event. This event will continue indefinitely um, and you can always see when it's coming up on the calendar. Looking at your ARC calendar. It'll usually put it down at the bottom. Jellyfish Pursuit. This is the leaderboard event that we talked about. You do have to opt in. Make sure you do that. Um, this is an event that you just start scoring for. You actually have to hit the button and opt into the event. Once you build the ISS Jellyfish, this event goes away. You can no longer see it. Uh, you can't check the scores. It's only for players who don't have a Jellyfish yet. So they'll only be competing against other players without the ship making it better for better better chances for them to actually get it. Then we got here we have our jellyfish brawl event, which is like I said, it's just what's going on now. You just have to be 39 to have the event and have the ship built. And then you just take your ship, go out and kill 50 things in these specific systems and get, you know, a whole bunch of rewards for doing so. Uh, like I said, it's about 5,000 uncommon parts total. Um, kind of around 2,000 or so gas. Just pull it over here so you can see it a little bigger, a little better. So different milestones. Uh, this doesn't change. This is the same kind of no matter what your uh, ops levels are. So you get, you know, quite a bit of, of common parts, uncommon parts. Like I said, this is about 5,000. Uh, looking at the ore, you're looking at a little over 1,000, maybe like 1,200 or so. Uh, and then probably double that in gas, 12, 17, 20, 2200 or so, give or take, in gas. And if you're curious about the actual upgrade costs, you know, by the, by the time you get it to this tier, tier 5, even with some efficiencies and things, you're still spending, you know, quite a bit of ship parts, uh, quite a bit of gas and ore. Um, so just hypothetically speaking, today's event... Gave, would have given me enough resources essentially to do this one component upgrade. Yeah, you get about one, well, by the time you get to tier five, the components start getting significantly more expensive. So this is where you're basically gonna, you're gonna get the resources one, <laughs> one a month uh, in order to, to upgrade that. Um, like I said, there are other ways to do it. To get the resources would be to level up and scrap Mayflowers. Uh, they do pay out the same resources that you would need for this, the four-star gas uh, ore and the ship parts. But you would really only want to do that in a situation where you were on a level capped server and you were trying to get the ship up a little higher, kind of be the big dog on your server uh, before the opportunity opens up to move to the level 42 ships. But again, you kind of want to make sure you're saving up a little bit of that too. Don't push yourself too far. Uh, the ship does continue to get exponentially more expensive each particular tier. So the more resources you spend investing in this, 
the less you're going to have for your future ships, especially if you're aiming for that Valdor as your level 42 ship, which is the other explorer. Just taking a look by explorer type. So just straight out of the gate, based on my research and things like that, you can see that the jellyfish for me starts at about three and a half million. Um, that's just the base values of the ship, again, based on my buildings, my research. Uh, whereas the Valdor is about two million higher for a base starting cost. Um, you know, in a tier four, tier five, tier four Valdor is probably going to get to about eight, eight and a half million. Um, you know, tier five, you're going to be getting close to about 10 million in strength, somewhere in that ballpark. Whereas the jellyfish is going to sort of cap out on you, you know, seven, eight million at best by the time. Plus, it's going to get more expensive to upgrade because it's a rare ship as opposed to an uncommon ship. So, something else to sort of keep in mind when you're figuring out how far do I really want to take this thing and how far do I want to go. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you learned something about the jellyfish today. And uh, be sure and give us a like, a little thumbs up. Leave any comments or questions you have down below. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and leave a thumbs down and a reason why you didn't like it. Uh, I don't mind the thumbs down, as long as you leave a reason why you, you gave the thumbs down. So uh, take it easy, guys. I will see you around the galaxy.